We're going to continue uh, with Catholic social doctrine. And um, we've, we've already seen how my society is, is formed and begins with the family, the cell, the fundamental cell of society. And we're going to review today uh, God's plan for the common good of society through Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ changed everything when he came, but God had a plan for Christ's coming. And that plan began right after the original sin. After the sin of Adam and Eve, okay, after original sin, in fact, immediately after that original sin took place, God promised a Savior. Okay? How did he do this? What did he do to, to, to tell us that he was going to save the human race from, from separation from him. The first revelation of a savior is in Genesis 3.15. Genesis 3.15 and it's called the Proto Evangelium. Proto meaning first, and evangelium, evangelist, as we get the word from, evangelium, uh, the first good news. Okay, of a savior. Okay. So, what was said in Genesis 3.15? God told God spoke to the devil who tempted Eve. Okay. He said, I will put enmity, okay. enmity Between you and the woman, okay, you, Satan, okay, the serpent, okay, and the woman, the woman is Mary, okay, the Blessed Virgin Mary, okay, and between your seed. Or offspring okay, is another way to and herds. Okay. That's what God says to Satan. I will put enmity between you, Satan, and the woman. The woman is really Mary, it's not Eve, okay? Between your seed or your offspring and herds. And The original Hebrew says this, it will crush your head. Now the it, and if you open up a Bible, it is a third person neuter. Okay? Neuter meaning either male or female. It will crush your head. 
the Bible, we don't read, it will crush your head. We usually read, he will crush your head. He is Jesus Christ, okay? Because Jesus is the seed of the woman. But, because it's a neuter, it can also be translated, she will crush your head. And she refers to Mary. Okay? Properly speaking, it's Jesus on the cross that, that crushes Satan, defeats him. But Mary does too, because Mary gives birth to Jesus. So, you read different Bibles, different translations, and you read, you don't read, it will crush your head, because that's the original Hebrew. You read either he will crush your head or she will crush your head. Both are acceptable, okay? because you can translate it both ways, it meaning either one or the other. Okay? Yes? This is a little off topic, but um, are we going to have another test before our final, or are we? Yes, we probably. It's about probably. Um, Okay. I was just wondering because it would be only like a week and I was wondering. Oh, no, oh, no, no, no. We won't have another test. No, we'll have the final. Oh, wait, that's what I meant. Okay. I was you may have a quiz. Good. I may give you a quiz on this. Yes. No, I was supposed to get a question all year. Michael. What? You don't need to comment. It's okay. Sorry. This is. This is the beginning of God's plan to save us, okay? This announcement of the good news, the first announcement of the good news, the first good news of the Savior, the Proto-Evangelium, okay? God promises a Savior. This is right after the original sin is committed. And God talks about this war that will take place between Satan and the woman and Jesus, or Mary, will crush the head of Satan. Now, the rest of the Old Testament is a preparation for the coming of Jesus Christ after this first announcement of the good news. And um, I'm going to review here today the whole history of salvation for you, okay? A good recalling of what happened in the Old Testament, okay? Because to understand what Jesus is about, we have to understand what happened in the Old Testament. So. After the sin of Adam and Eve, okay, after that original sin, okay, after original sin, OS, okay, sin increased, okay, sin increased in the world, okay. Where do we see sin increasing right away? If you keep reading the Bible, after chapter 3 comes chapter 4, and chapter 4 you see the first murder take place. Cain kills Abel. Okay. Sin increased. Okay. Cain kills Abel. <coughs> His brother. We have brother killing brother. Okay. And sin begins to spread. It spreads throughout the world until um, <coughs> God decides, because sin has spread so much, okay, to destroy the world through a flood. So Noah and his family okay, are saved from the flood. Okay? The great flood. Okay? Um, Noah and his family get in the ark. And you know there are studies done. Where is the ark located? Ooh. Some think that the ark could be located on the top of Mount Ararat in Iran. Um, there, is, there is a big, huge boat sitting under ice up on the top of Mount Ararat in Iran. Um, people have speculated how could Noah have fit all the animals in the ark because they're too big. Uh, what he could have done, they've done demonstrations of this, he's gotten the baby animals and got them in the ark the big ones could fit everything in. Um, anyway, Noah and, and his family, they're saved. Okay, God begins to, to rebuild the human race, or allows the human race to flourish. And um, then the next big event okay, in the history of salvation is about 1900 BC, 
C means circa, around, okay, 1930 BC, because we're not really sure, okay. God makes a covenant. with Abraham, okay? That's, that's a really important event um, because God begins okay, and begins to form his chosen people. Out of all the people in the world, God begins to form one people from the seed of Abraham, the descendants of Abraham. And we know that God tests Abraham's faith. The great test of his faith is what? What does God command Abraham to do? What does he command him to do? Noah. To offer up his son and sacrifice. Abraham's willing to do that. Okay. And in fact, the letter to the Hebrews in the New Testament tells us that God believed Abraham would raise up Isaac from the dead, okay? Isaac, his son, if he killed him. Because God was is faithful to his promises, and God promised Abraham that his descendants would number like the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore, and yet he's going to kill his son. So Abraham believed that God would raise him from the dead, okay? But God didn't demand that Abraham sacrifice his son, he stopped him, because God would send his own son. Isaac was a, a representative, a prefigurement of Jesus Christ, God's son, who, who did die for us, okay? So, um, the test of Abraham, of faith, okay? Test of faith um, to sacrifice Isaac, his son, okay? God didn't require it. And after Isaac comes Jacob. Okay. Isaac's son is Jacob who gets the promise. Okay. Actually, Isaac had two sons, Jacob and Esau. Esau was the older son who should have gotten the, the, the inheritance of his father, but Esau sold it off for some food, okay? So Jacob gets the blessing. Jacob's name is changed to something. What is Jacob's name changed to, to reveal, yes, Israel, yes. Jacob, okay, his name is changed, okay? <laughs> Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay, that's how it goes. Abraham, son is Isaac. Okay. Son is Jacob. Whose, whose name is changed to Israel. Okay. They're the same person. Okay. Israel. Okay. El comes from the Hebrew word, okay? It's short for Elohim. El for Elohim means God. Israel means um, he who contended with or wrestled with God because he got his name and changed after he wrestled with an angel, God's messenger, all night, okay? So he who contended with, okay? or wrestled with, okay? With Elohim, okay? And <clears throat> Jacob Israel, okay. how many sons? Twelve. Twelve sons, okay? Twelve sons, and they become the twelve 
12 sons. <laughs> they become the 12 tribes okay, of Israel. Now one of those sons, one of those sons is sold off into slavery. Okay? That is Joseph. Okay? He's sold by his brothers. Okay? He ends up in Egypt. Okay? And he becomes basically the prime minister to Pharaoh. Okay? So, um, Becomes basically second in the kingdom, okay? In Pharaoh's kingdom. And we know the story, his brothers, they, they come to buy food and he hides himself uh, because he now speaks Egyptian and he finally reveals himself to his brothers. And there's a famine in, in the land of Canaan. So the whole clan, Jacob and Israel and all the sons, they move to Egypt. And um, there, there, the, the Israelites, as they're called, okay, after a change comes with a different line of kings in Egypt, okay, the Israelites are made slaves, okay. And they're slaves for about 430 years. They're in slavery. They're building the, the pyramids and other things. And um, after 430 years of slavery, God sends someone to rescue them from their slavery. And God sends Moses. Okay, now, what is this? So they're slaves for 430 years, and God sends Moses. Okay. Moses, whose name means he who was drawn out of the water because his mother saved him by placing him in a basket in the Nile River when Pharaoh ordered all the children of the Israelites, the males, killed. Why did, the, why did Pharaoh order all the male children killed? Why? Because some children killed No, that did wasn't the reason. Did he think he was going to be like overpowered by that boy that was He was afraid that the Israelites were procreating. They were, they were obeying God's command, being fertile and multiplying, they were having many children, and Pharaoh saw, oh, the Israelites are going to outnumber us soon, okay, because they're having more children than us, okay. Uh, why weren't the Egyptian children, or the Egyptian women, having children, okay? Were they infertile? No, okay. Um, the, some historical records dating back thousands of years tell us that during the time of the Egyptians, and for, for thousands of years, there was an herb that one could grow and consume that would render one infertile. Okay? It's like a contraceptive pill. Okay? You, you take it and you, you won't have a child and you have sex without children. They thought this was good. No, this is against God's plan. So between that and abortion, because abortions have always been practiced when people don't want children, okay? Uh, that's something that's been in existence for, for as long as the human race almost, okay? So the Egyptians are having less children. The Israelites are faithful to God, so they're, they're being fruitful and multiplying. They're about to outnumber the Egyptians, so the Pharaoh orders all the boys killed. They're all killed except one. One child is saved, that's Moses. He's placed in the basket by his mother, and who finds Moses floating in the, in the Jordan River? Who is it? The, the princess, the, the daughter of Pharaoh, okay? he finds, she finds uh, uh, this baby and asks actually his mother, Moses' mother, to care for the child, okay? but not knowing that it, that's his mother. So Moses grows up 
in the in the, the palace of the pharaoh, and um, when he's an adult, he sees a an Egyptian beating brutally a Hebrew, an Israelite, and he strikes it and kills him. And then he has to flee because word gets out back to Pharaoh because he's not an Egyptian to do this would mean the death penalty. So he flees off in the desert. In the desert, uh, he, he ends up meeting some people, ends up marrying someone, and then after some years, he has this, this uh, event that takes place in the desert where he sees a burning bush. And God speaks to him in the burning bush. He says, I want you to go and take my people out of Egypt. Moses complains because he had a speech impediment. He says, I am not a good speaker. God says, no problem. Your brother Aaron will go with you. He'll speak for you. But you go and lead the people out. So he goes to Pharaoh. Pharaoh refuses to let the people go. First to just go out and worship and, and, and offer sacrifice to God. So what does, what does God do? He sends plagues upon the Egyptians. Ten of them all together. There's hail, there's uh, locusts, there's darkness, there's um, uh, gnats all over. One, one plague after another, Pharaoh refuses to, to let the Israelites go after nine plagues. And then the tenth plague, okay, the tenth plague is the angel of death, okay, strikes down, okay, kills okay, all the firstborn sons, all the firstborn males okay, of the Egyptians. Okay. And So all the firstborn males of the Egyptians are struck down. The Israelites, the Hebrews, are saved. What do they have to do for the angel of death to pass over their homes and not strike down their sons? Okay. If you kill a male lamb, okay, okay, the Hebrews, okay. Their sons are spared, okay, from the angel of death, okay. Um, the angel passes over, okay, their homes, okay. If they um, kill, a year old, one year old male lamb, okay, and sprinkle its blood, okay, its blood on the doorposts, okay, and they have to do something else besides sprinkle the blood on the doorposts. One more thing they have to do for the angel of death to pass over. And it's extremely important, it's often passed over when you're telling the story, because it relates to Jesus Christ. What else do they have to do besides sprinkle the blood on the doorposts? They have to do one more thing with the lamb. Never. Wait, yeah. eat it. Didn't, it, since all the crops were bad, uh, the wheat they made was bad, and they fed the first son the most, so the first son's going to be eating the most out of the like, bad wheat, so he's going to be like getting sick? and probably die from like a bad week since he ate it the most. Like, all right, so you said I, I, all I the plagues, like one of them, like it, it's the drought and everything, and so there's... The Israelites like, were spared from the plagues. They, they weren't affected by the plagues. The blood turning, the water turning, the blood, the locusts, all that, they weren't spared from that. Okay, but the wheat they I mean, had... And they were spared, actually. But the wheat, what wheat? Or, about? I mean, I'm, the food they had, like the, they, um... Whatever food they had, they fed it to the first son the most. But since, well, wait. 
there's, there's nothing about feeding the most food to the person of the most, right? No, no, no but he's just, like, giving an argument, right? He's saying, yeah, he's saying that died. what if it That's, wasn't the angel of death, what if it was just because coincidence? Or all the, yeah. because of all the plagues. And that they food. ate, that they ate from so the they probably ate the bad food and then they died. Well, where did you get this from? Isn't it, like, like, the culture to feed the person the most since he's going to be, like, I don't know. Like you never heard that before. Like the first son needs to be like. The first son may be preferred, but this this is. Uh, I mean, your what what is your point? What's 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 your I'm point? Saying, it, it's just maybe if it wasn't the angel of death, it was probably just because the first son. <laughs> but, but we know there was an angel of death because this is what God has revealed to us. The angel of death went through. Yeah. But the, this, is, this is what God has revealed to us. The angel of death went through and struck down the firstborn sons of the Egyptians, spared the sons of the, the uh, Israelites, the Hebrews. Why? Because they killed the, the lamb, the year old male lamb, unblemished, sprinkled its blood on the doorposts, okay, and Okay. And ate its roasted flesh. Okay. Okay. The flesh of the lamb. Okay. They ate the flesh of the lamb. They had to do this to be saved. Okay. The lamb in the Old Testament story, okay, that lamb represents Jesus Christ. Okay. He's the true lamb of God who came to take away the sins of the world. That's why Jesus says in chapter 6 of John's Gospel, okay, Jesus is the true lamb, okay, the lamb of God. Okay. So this is how the Old Testament and New Testaments link up. Jesus is the true Lamb of God. Who points him out as the Lamb of God the first time, the first public appearance he makes, he's pointed out as the Lamb of God. By whom? Who is it? He. John the Baptist points him out. Jordan River. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. So Jesus is pointed out as the Lamb of God by John the Baptist. And Jesus tells us, okay, Jesus tells us we must okay, eat his flesh okay, and drink his blood. Okay. To have eternal life. Okay. And that uh, to have eternal life and to be raised up on the last day, you must eat his flesh and drink his blood. Okay. So, so, uh, so we must eat his flesh and drink his blood to have eternal life. Okay. And be raised up in a glorified body, okay, on the last day. And that's John chapter 6, verses 49 and following, okay. That's where Jesus says, I'm the bread of life. Unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life in you. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. I will raise him up on the last day. The Eucharist, that's what this is, eating his flesh and drinking his blood is the Eucharist. The Eucharist is the pledge, okay, pledge of our future resurrection. At the end of time, 
We're looking to be raised up in a glorified body. Okay? That's why what happened with the, the Passover lamb is so important. It links the Old and New Testaments. Okay? It tells us who Jesus really is. Okay? And <clears throat> the Eucharist, the pledge of our future resurrection, okay, in bodies glorified. Okay? Just like Jesus has now in heaven. If we receive his flesh and blood, we're going to be raised up on the last day. It's the pledge of our future resurrection in bodies glorified. Because the Eucharist is the risen, glorified body and blood of Jesus. We have to understand that. The Eucharist is the risen, glorified, body and blood of Jesus. Jesus rose from the dead. He's in heaven now. The Eucharist we receive at Mass is the risen glorified Christ. Okay? And it's the pledge of our future resurrection. So if we want to be raised up again on the last day, when Jesus comes again to be numbered among his sheep, the Eucharist is the key to this. He says it clearly. Okay. So, um, anyway, that's the link between the Old and New Testaments that's important. But we're going to return now to, uh, to the history of salvation. Okay. Um, so after Moses leads the people out of Egypt, okay, um, by the way, I, I was out at, at uh, Universal Studios about 35 years ago, and I, uh, <laughs> yeah, I was. And um, how many of you have seen Cecil B. DeMille's movie, The Ten Commandments? Have you seen it? And Moses parts the Red Sea, okay. Now, <clears throat> how they filmed that was interesting. They superimpose Charlton Heston as Moses uh, over a, uh, there was a pool of water about this deep that had uh, a drain in the middle of it with, uh, that would suck the water down. And they, they demonstrated for us. They pressed a button and the waters flowed down and it looked like the waters uh, with a camera right at, at that level, looked like the water separated and they, they just superimposed uh, Charlton Heston is Moses and the others going through the waters, okay? And uh, so Moses was chosen to lead the people out. After the 10th plague, Pharaoh let the people go. Moses led the people out. Okay. Okay. He led the Hebrews out of Egypt, okay? Out of slavery, okay? In Egypt. And this is about um, 1275, okay? 1275 BC. So Moses led the Hebrews out of slavery in Egypt. Okay? First they go to Mount Sinai, okay? Where he receives on top of Mount Sinai, okay, the Ten Commandments, okay, it's also called the Law, the Law of Moses, okay, he receives those, and um, they wander in the desert for 40 years, okay, why is that? Because they, they disobeyed God. Some thought that they couldn't defeat the, the peoples. They argued against Moses. So they wandered okay, for 40 years okay, in the desert. And then 
Moses' right-hand man, you could say Joshua, leads the people in. Okay. He leads the Hebrews okay, into the promised land, okay. the land of Canaan. Okay. And they defeat all the peoples there. And um, for 200 years, okay, the judges, judges rule Israel. Okay? They don't have a king. 200 years, the judges rule Israel. Um, probably the most famous judge, um, or one of the most famous is, is Samson, okay? the strongest man. Okay, supposedly whoever lived, okay. Um, actually, there's a female judge, Deborah, okay. Gideon was a judge. There are, there are judges that they rule for 200 years. And at the end of 200 years, um, after a series of judges rule them, they ask for a king and God gives them a king. And the first king, of Israel is anyone know Old Testament history? Who's the first king of Israel? David. Nope. Nope. Who's the first king of Israel? Saul. Saul is the first king of Israel. Okay. Saul, first king okay, of Israel. Saul. Okay. Saul was from the tribe of Benjamin. When the 12 tribes went into Israel, they settled according to their tribes in different places. Okay. 12 different areas, both, both on, on both sides of the Jordan River. Saul was the first king, but Saul disobeyed God. Okay. So God took the kingship away from him and his sons and gave it to King David. Okay. He's, he's about 1000 BC. He becomes king. Okay. And he unites all the tribes. Okay. He unites the 12 tribes under one, one leader himself. Okay. Now David is from the tribe of Judah. Okay. famous prophecy that, that Jacob made to his son Judah hundreds and hundreds of years before. He said that from your line, Judah, kings will reign. The scepter shall never depart from Judah. So uh, King David is from the tribe of Judah. He becomes the king who unites the tribes. Uh, he's a good king. He sins. In a serious way, once God forgives him, okay, with Bathsheba, um, commits adultery and murder, okay, and King David's son Solomon okay, succeeds him. <coughs> Solomon's known for his wisdom, his great wisdom, okay. um, and <coughs> Solomon sins also, uh, even though he had the greatest wisdom. He let lust overtake him. Solomon had, I believe it was 900 concubines. He had, I think, uh, about 600 wives and 900 concubines, meaning women he just had relations with. Okay? Many of them were pagans who led him into pagan worship. Okay? Well, after King Solomon dies, okay, um, he dies and the kingdom okay, of Israel splits. Okay, splits. North and south. Okay. The northern kingdom is the kingdom is known as the kingdom of Israel. Okay. 
and the southern kingdom is known as the kingdom of Judah. Okay. The kingdom of Israel. And then there's the kingdom of Judah. Okay. Judah because that's uh, King David was from the tribe of Judah. That's the area that Jerusalem is located. Okay. And that split takes place, I think it's uh, nine... 930 BC, okay? So the kingdom splits at 930 BC. And the kingdom will never be united again, okay? The northern and the southern kingdoms are divided forever, okay? And some years pass by, and in 721 BC, 721 or 22, let me see, 722, okay? The northern kingdom. Kristen Paulson, please see guidance at the bow. Kristen Paulson, please see guidance at the bow. Lucas Fitzpatrick and Kyle Cable, please come to the main office at the bow. Lucas Fitzpatrick and Kyle Cable, please come to the main office at the bow. <laughs> okay, 722 BC, the northern kingdom is defeated by the Assyrians. Because the people in the northern kingdom, they fall into pagan idol worship. <laughs> we'll pick up. There you go.